All right, have you ever seen these cool effects where you see someone hit a ball and then it goes flying through the sky really fast and it's tracking and then it goes back using a drone and some other stuff? Well, if you're interested in something like this, then this is the tutorial for you. Okay guys, let's get started. I just wanna let you know though, this is going to be a little longer tutorial just because there's so many different elements going on. You're gonna have motion tracking, you're gonna have uh, effects that you're gonna be using and you're going to be cutting, tracking, creating spheres. So it will take just a little longer, but I'll do my very best to get through it quickly so that you can do a step-by-step -step and get through it fast. So enough of me talking, let's get going. So the first thing that we're gonna do is I need to find the spot. If you can see, I've got my clip here. There's no golf ball or anything. I need to get to the point where there's making contact where the would-be ball is. So I'm just hitting page down on my keyboard until I get to about right there. That looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna split the clip into two. Shift Command D. That splits this clip into two. Now that I have this clip split into two, I'm gonna go ahead and motion track just this clip. I'm also going to move this underneath and I'll show you why in a little bit. But right now, let's do the motion tracking on this layer. So let's go to the tracker panel, track motion, and we're going to have rotation and scale. And now we have our tracker points right here. I'm gonna go ahead and put those on. And the reason that we have to motion track is because moving around this isn't on a tripod, it's the drone and it actually moves a little bit. So if I just put a golf ball there, it's gonna move around. So we need to track this. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the tracker points, make sure I'm at the very beginning of the, of the uh, clip. I'm gonna put a tracker point right there. I'll make this a little bigger. And then I'm gonna put a tracker point over here. And I'll make this a little bigger. And essentially I have my two tracker points. I'm gonna go ahead and analyze forward. Not a lot of movement right now, just keeping an eye on this. It's gonna move around towards the end when he actually swings because then the drone starts to move. And you can see there it is. So there is some movement there, but I've got everything that I need. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new null object. And now that I have a new null object, I'm gonna go ahead and edit the target in the tracker panel. And I'm gonna do the null object, hit okay. I've got my null object and I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply, okay. Now I've got my null object, I'm gonna hit shift command D, get rid of the rest of the null. And I'll go ahead and close this out and we'll test it here in just a minute. I'm also going to bring this clip all the way back open again, and I'll show you why in just a second, but let's bring the golf ball in. In another tutorial, like another tutorial, I showed you how to make a uh, golf ball, so I'm not gonna go through how to make that. I'm just going through and doing the second half of this tutorial, but if you want to learn how to make the golf ball, there is another tutorial in my on my channel that you can use. So I, I, all I'm doing is I'm copying this golf ball. It doesn't do anything, it's just using CC Sphere. So I'm gonna go ahead and now paste that and I'm gonna bring it to the top. So now I've got my golf ball and I've got, uh, it's too big obviously, so I'm gonna hit S on the keyboard and I'm gonna go to about 8% and that's gonna bring it down way low and I'm gonna put that on the T. If I do page up, I'm gonna to go to the very, very beginning and make sure that I put it right on the T. I wanna make sure it's right at the beginning so that my tracking is done correctly. So I'm gonna bring this on here. And there's also needs to be a drop shadow because this has a drop shadow. You so I'm gonna go ahead and go to effects and presets, drop shadow, go ahead and drag that onto it. And then I'm going to make the distance a little farther. I'm going to adjust kind of the direction and I'm gonna make it a little softer shadow. And now if we play it, 
it's it's going to bounce around and i'm going to show you why is because we didn't track it yet we didn't attach it to the null object so what i need to do now is go back here and hit the pick whip tool and parent that to the null object that i made and now when i track it it's going to stay still so now it doesn't move it's tracking right to this area so that it's not going to move at all pretty cool i got my little shadow on there so it makes it look more realistic so if i zoom out and we play it that looks pretty cool now you can adjust the color it's pretty bright you can adjust the color and do some other stuff but i'm not doing that right now this is basically to show you how to actually do the animation of all of this so now that i've done that i have movement but it's not really doing anything so now i need to actually start doing the movement and the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to zoom in here just a little bit and I'm going to change <clears throat> a few things. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this golf swing that I duplicated and I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go to time enable time remapping. Now the reason that I did this because I can't actually do time remapping when you have uh, when you have tracked motion on this, it won't let you do it unless you delete it. Now I could delete it because I've attached it all to this, but I'd rather just keep this the same and have this be where I speed up the footage. So time remap or what I'm using right here, this time remap allows me to speed up footage. It allows me to slow down footage. So it's kind of like how you would do like those speed ramps and stuff. Okay, the keyframe is set right there. So now let's go back into here. Make sure if you're in there and you can't see it, it's because it was double clicked. So make sure you go back up here so you can actually see the clip and you can see the balls there. And then boom, it's gonna be gone. So I'm gonna go to the very end of this clip which is about right there. I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to split the golf ball. And I'm just gonna go ahead and hit return golf ball, make that a little shorter. You don't have to do that, but I'm just doing it. So now I have my golf ball and I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna turn this into a 3D object by hitting the square button right here. And I'm going to move this to right here. Now I know you're like, well, it's right there from there. It moves so quickly that it's, you're really not gonna pay attention to it. You'll know because you're designing it, but people that are watching aren't really going to be able to notice it that much, especially for how quickly it's gonna move. Now what I'm gonna do, go to the effects and I'm gonna get rid of the drop shadow. I don't want the drop shadow on there anymore. That's why I'm splitting it. And another reason why I'm splitting it is because I'm gonna, use, I'm gonna rotate it. And if I rotated it without splitting this, then it would be rotating on the T rather than sitting still on the T. And then as soon as I hit the golf ball, I want it to start to rotate, okay? So I've got that, but I want to, before I do the animation of the ball, I'm gonna animate and speed up my footage so that I have that first and I'm happy with the way that it that it remaps the time and then I'll animate the golf ball with how I've done the uh, zoom in of the zone the zoom in of the drone footage. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit a keyframe right here. And this keyframe is so that I don't mess up my time remapping from right here. So I'm just doing a keyframe right there. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this down just a little bit. And I'm gonna drop these down for now so you can see how I'm doing this. So now I'm gonna go in a few more seconds, probably somewhere around right here. And I'm gonna do another keyframe by clicking keyframe and I'm going to start pushing through the footage. I'm just clicking and dragging to get the footage where I want it. So let's go ahead and let's see how far, that's pretty far right there. Let's go back just a little bit. Okay, 
so now I've got, I'm gonna just play through it for a second. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so that looks good. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna click on both of these keyframes, right click on it, keyframe assistant, easy ease. So now it's just gonna be a little smoother transition from when it hits and how quickly it's gonna go. And there we go, we got a few more seconds. This isn't gonna be a super long clip. It'll probably be, I don't know, maybe 10 seconds. Probably have it end somewhere around in there. So I'm gonna hit another keyframe. You don't have to do this, but I'm just gonna make it a little, little smaller so there's a little bit of motion or a little bit of movement between this keyframe and this keyframe. Not a lot, but just a little bit. The other thing is as you're doing this stuff, don't forget to save. Command S to save if you're on a Mac. You want to, just in case it crashes, all of your extra work is not for nothing. Okay, and the other thing is if you want to just see the motion of it, you can drop the render preview to a lower uh, quality so that it'll render faster so you can see it a little bit better. And that's what I'm doing right now. I just wanna see the movement at the end, which this is looking really good. So I'll watch it one more time. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go ahead, hit save again. I've got my animation pretty much done or the speed ramping for this clip. So now that I've done that, let's go ahead and animate the ball. So in order to animate the ball, we gotta do a few different things. First thing we're gonna do is hit P on the keyboard and we're going to click the stopwatch to create a keyframe for this ball. Now remember, turn it into a 3D object by clicking the square so that you can work in Z space because that's what we're gonna be doing now is pushing everything through Z space. So I'm gonna use the page down on my keyboard to go through the keyframes. And I'm basically going to line up to when I get to this keyframe right here where it then kind of slows down. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust the position of this golf ball. Do the position, we're gonna do some keyframes. I've hit a keyframe there, now I'm going to move this in Z space. just slowly bringing this forward and I'm just hitting down on the the page down on the keyboard and that's probably a good spot for it let's take a look and see okay now it looks a little blurry yeah, that's good. Okay, the reason it looks a little blurry is because I have it in quarter. We'll go ahead and do full just so you can see it. Okay, I've added my keyframes and I have it in the position that I want. Might make it a little bigger right here. So I might make it just a little bit bigger. I'm gonna hit another keyframe and I'll make it a little bigger. I don't wanna go so much but about right there. It needs to go a little, a little bigger. Actually, I'm gonna go on this keyframe and I'm gonna make it a little smaller. So go ahead and watch it. Okay, that's cool. That looks good. So now what we have to do, go ahead and hit save again and we're gonna go and actually add some rotation to this now. So now we'll go back to the first keyframe. Zoom in really close. And we'll go ahead and click that down arrow again. And we're gonna go to effects, CC sphere, rotation. And we've got rotation X, Y, and Z. So now 
we've got this clip and I'm going to have it rotate to here. So I'm going to, I'm going to do it a couple frames before this keyframe right here. And I'm going to, let's see which way this is going. It's going up. Barely going to move that one. I'd like to move this one. So I'm going to do it a couple rotations, maybe three rotations. Let me go in here so you can see. I'm going to zoom out just a little. I'm, I'm tr My goal is to get the logo right in the middle when it stops at this keyframe. Okay. Then let's see this rotation. Okay. I like this rotation. We'll do three of those as well. Okay, that looks good. And then I'm gonna page down to keyframe through it a little bit to this one, two, three. So it's moving. And then I'm going to adjust this slightly, like just a little bit to there. And I'm gonna adjust this a little bit to there. I'm actually going to do this just a little more right there. Okay, so now what it should do is it should be rotating and it is rotating and spinning. So it kind of looks more like a golf ball and then it's going to slow down right when it hits those two key, those two keyframes and then stop and it stops right there. And this rendering is killing me. It's taking forever. I'm going to go back to a third or quarter even because I don't care if it's clear right now. I just want to see how it rotates. So that looks pretty good. So there it is. Then what I'm going to do is about right there. I'm going to hit the keyframes again. So if between this keyframe and this keyframe, it's not moving much. And then I'm going to have it just move just a little bit more to show like some more movement. So now it's moving and then slowly, and then I'm gonna hit the P on the keyboard. I'm gonna do another keyframe, page down, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10. And I'm going to move this position off the screen. And all I did is go on in the Z space again. So now we'll go here, starts up, and then it's gone. Now what I need to do is let's go back to our rotation. So back to the effects CC sphere. And we need to, cause it's not moving right here after this spot. And then it goes forward. I want to make sure that it's moving. So I'm going to highlight both of these. I'm going to do a keyframe for the Y and a keyframe for the Z. And it's four and plus 17 and three and plus 29. So I'm gonna bring this up to like 42, 50, somewhere on there. And I'm just bringing these up so that between here, it's still rotating and then it's gone, okay? So that's why I'm doing that is because you don't want it to like stop and totally be still unless that's the effect you're going for. I just want it to be kind of like small, so a uh, smooth movement. That's looking pretty good. So we have just basically one more thing. There's still some other stuff that you can do um, like with color grading and that. I'm not gonna get into the color grading, but I'm gonna do one more effect to really sell how quickly this is moving. So I'm gonna click on the golf swing layer and I'm gonna type fast radio fast blur. And I'm gonna put that right here on this. So this radio fast blur, gonna go ahead and go to effects, radio fast blur, and I'm gonna do center and amount. And I'm actually gonna drop the amount to zero. And I'm gonna to go to full cause you're gonna to need to see this clear. And what I'm gonna do is there's this, right here, there's this center, okay? So you wanna put that on the golf ball. And I click on these little this little thing here to get the crosshairs. 
and then I can click there. So that centers that fast blur. Then I'm gonna hit the page down one, and I'm gonna just start adjusting the amount a little bit. And you can see it's starting to look like it's moving. Two, and it's moving, so I want this to be on the ball. One, two, three. I'm just page. I'm just hitting page down, and I'm moving this, and just putting that on there, so it centers on the ball. And then I'm gonna. I'm even gonna bump bump that up to like 65. So it really gives some like effect, like it's really flying really fast, and it also gives kind of a depth of field which is huge for having an object in front and then one behind. I'm just hitting page down on my key on my keyboard and that looks pretty good. I'm going to zoom out. So now let's go ahead and take a look at it. So it's going to hit and it's not only increasing the amount of the fast blur, but it's also following right in the center of the golf ball to give a feeling that it's moving super quick. And then all I'm gonna do is after I get to this keyframe right here and the ball leaves, so I'm gonna go, I'm just hitting page down again, frame by frame until, until, the, uh, until the golf ball, I'm gonna hit position. So it's like right there, until the golf ball is gone now I'm going to go ahead and keyframe both of those. I'm actually going to do it one back where, where you can actually see the golf ball. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to hold shift down and move it one frame and then I'm going to go forward and I'm going to drop the amount. So it's for one second, it's there. And then after it goes, the blur is then gone. So now that blur is gone and it's clear. So this is how it should look now. That is how you make this effect. Now you can obviously adjust it. You could pre-comp all of this. So the next thing that's gonna help you sell this is the actual sound design. So we're gonna go ahead and drop in some sounds and see how it works. So there's a sound effect of a ball being hit and that should line line right up. So a quick little sound effect. That's also very important because we want it to swoosh or make the sound after the ball hits. So don't forget to add sound design. The other thing that you may want to add on here is some ambient noise. And if you don't know where to go, you can go to like story blocks and download um, some audio like files or epidemic sound is another place you can download stuff. Both of those are great. Um, Art list is another one. So if you have those, you can then download the assets to make these sounds, but it makes all the difference having those special of those sound effects to move along with your animation. Thanks again, guys. If you like this tutorial, please consider subscribing, giving me a thumbs up and comment below on an effect you'd like to see or figure out how one is done. I'd love to make more content. So please give me some feedback and thanks again, guys.